indeed. Well, welcome to our little orchard. This is a variety called Somerset Red Streak. Hmm. Mm, very tannic. A little bit of sharpness. Good old West Country cider apple being grown here in the south. So, all the best. Long live English cider. Excellent. Thank you very much, Stephen. If you do not add any yeast, yeah. then natural yeast will kick in. Mm. This is unreliable. Right. You get more wash, you get rid of any you know, slug mess. Uh, And uh, once you've done that, um, crush them, then you will have a, a considerable cocktail of um, wild microorganisms. Mm. You know, some of these people will drink cider, which to me is filthy and undrinkable, and say, oh, which is okay. They're wrong, it isn't. <laughs> uh, you know, I think cider should be clean. Yes. Even if you take a great black Chardonnay, you can get quite a wide, quite a lot of different flavoured wines just out of the Chardonnay grape. Um, and apples is a bit the same, really. Uh, they've all got different flavours. And uh, you cannot make good cider out of bad apples. Yeah. But you can make bad cider out of good apples. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> same as food. If you, I mean, you can you can make you can make just with cheaper ingredients. I mean. Yeah. Um, you know, if you butcher a cow, then okay, there's some sirloin steak, there's some fillet steak, um, there's also some um, shin beef. And typically, you know, shin beef is about 12 pounds a kilo, and um, fillet steak is about 40 or about 50 pounds a kilo. And there's a reason for that. Flash fry and it's very tasty uh, if you like that sort of thing. But with your shin beef, you've got to stew it for two hours. The nutritional value is the same, uh, but the aesthetic value is different. This apple I'm picking up here, by the way, is uh, Dabinet. Um, Dabinet is generally considered uh, to be the best general purpose cider apple. Uh, it's a nice mix of, uh, you know, if you were planting an orchard, if I was planting a new orchard uh, to make some cider, if I was planting 10 trees, I would want at least four of them to be cabinet. Uh, because uh, you can see it's a nice, it's quite big. First of all, it's a big crop. Mm. A, a big, good, big crop here. Secondly, the apples are a decent size. The best way to do that ruins cider is the vinegar. Um, mm. And that needs oxygen. So mm. It's very good to exclude oxygen from your fermentation, yeah. and indeed from your stored cider to exclude oxygen. Yeah. There's, there's bags about this online. If you, if you haven't really, the cider sickness called rope. Um, and if you've ever tasted it, you'll never want to taste it again. Um, this is um, something that it, it turns the cider into a sort of mucusy stuff. Uh, uh, so if you pour it, it pours like string. Oh, right. Um, it's horrible. Um, you, uh, I've never had that since I started. I, I had that a few times um, before I learned better. And to avoid it, um, basically you want enough acid mm -hmm. in your original uh, blend. Should I add citric if, acid? Um, if you've got enough acid in your cider, you don't ever need to add acid. Yeah. Um, I mean, personally, I've never added acid. Um, but again, a bit of sulphite will help mm. to prevent ropiness. You've, you've got a good picking rate, um. <laughs> Well, it's just mm. doing it for a while. If I, if I get on my hands and knees, then I mean, I've got big hands as well, so I can grab three mm. apples with one graft. This tree here. Is this a graft? Have you grafted this one? Uh, that's, that wasn't me, that was a friend who did. Uh. Um, I don't know how it's going. I, I've just left it alone completely. Uh, the idea is that this should have some roots in it so that ideally they'll be able to cut it off here and stick that in the ground and it'll right. grow. Uh. Uh, that's up to them, I wouldn't have done it. This is 
Harry Masters jersey. And this is some, um, again, it's a very nice apple. Uh, a beautiful colour. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? I mean, you won't get... <laughs> Um, Gladly that, you can't go wrong with. Um, and I would certainly um, pick some of these as well. This variety, you watch out for stinging nettles. This is Tremlet Bitter. Uh, and this is, uh, this tree is notorious for only cropping every other year. Oh, wow. In mean, one year, you'll have a massive crop, hmm. and the next year, you'll have none. Um, but, which is not obviously a great advantage but people still grow it because it's a very good uh, it's a very good variety it's very bitter this is a typical example of a of, a, of really quite a bitter west country cider apple um, but it's got very little acid in it so you need to balance it with some acid uh, yeah hopefully it's got a heavy rain um, but if you, yeah, if you go I mean, we haven't got many. Um, I mean, I've picked what I, I picked everything I want. I've made 200 litres of cider this year, and I've got some more trees, more apples picked. And I probably will make some more. I might even make some today, depending on how the day goes and how I feel. Um, but yeah, get as many of these as you can. Get mm. all, that's only one tree of um, pink and black, so I would take a lot. Uh, there's not that many, but I would take all you can. Um, and. Uh, Despite them not looking so pretty aesthetically, they're better apples than these, you would say. Um, yeah. But interesting, if you look at the crop of, I mean, that's um, Harry Master's Jersey, Dabby Net, Kingston Black. If you look at the relative amount of fruit on the ground underneath the tree. Yeah. Um, these, and also these are bigger. So it's these are more valuable. So I was planting if I was planting a new, let's say we had to move away from here um, for the rest of our lives, um, and I had a little bit of land and I had enough land to plant 10 apple trees, I'd probably plant four uh, Dabinet and two of the Sari Masters jersey. I probably wouldn't plant a Kingston Black because it's not a very reliable cropper. Um, it's a bit like Cox's Orange Pippin. A lot of people, I won't say everybody, but you know, people who grew up with Cox's Orange Pippin and you know what a lovely apple it can be when it's properly ripe, uh, would say, yeah, it's the best apple there is. A lot of people would take that view. But it's a hard apple to grow. It's not a heavy cropper and it's very susceptible to a number of apple diseases. Um, so uh, Kingston Black is a bit like that. I mean, people say, yeah, it's the best cider apple, but yeah, would you rather have, um, you know, 40 kilos of, of um, Kingston Black or 100 kilos of, um, of, of some other cider varieties, which maybe aren't quite as good, but they're much better croppers. Uh, but, yeah, so this is Harry Masters Jersey. I mean, people argue still about what Jersey signifies. It may well be to do with the island. Jersey, which of course are also known as Les Îles Anglo Normal, mm. and they're off the coast of Normandy, which is famous for its uh, excellent cider. Interesting thing about the French, so the Norman cider, I mean, the French do produce full strength cider, but I mean, typically, it's English or British cider would typically be about seven or eight percent alcohol and bone dry. Yeah. Um, whereas the, the, the French, particularly in Normandy, um, they have a different style of apple production. Um, they have these very old orchards with very big trees in them, and they graze cows underneath them. Uh, they don't pick the apples. They don't pick up the apples until quite late. I remember we went over to Normandy once with the family, and um, I remember it was Halloween because there were some kids dressed as Dracula coming into the shop, uh, <laughs> scrounge some pastries or whatever, and. Um, uh, uh, and, and they were uh, I, they were picking the apples up just then we could see that you know, one of the little Port Levesque, one of the little cheese towns um, 
Maybe the cheese goes with the cider. The crazy cattle. Mm. The crazy uh, brown and white cows in the orchard. Delicious. They, they, they eat the apples, I imagine. Yeah, but they don't. They don't they, they use particular apples. They don't feed them a lot of fertilizer. Um, don't feed them a lot of fertilizer. And, oh, and uh, you grab, they, grab this one. Yep. Uh, yeah, and um, they, 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 they don't press them until it's quite cold. And they often add a bit of, uh, of enzyme to it as well. And, um, and the, the, the cider forms a big, thick, gloopy mess on top. And you get a clear fluid underneath. And so what they do then is um, they, they rack the fluid off. Uh, they rack the fluid off and then ferment the cider slowly. And uh, what happens uh, is that um, it's a bit mucky. Isn't it? Most of these actually are pretty clean, aren't they? We're uh, hoping to press on Sunday. That'd be fine, no problem. I mean, some of these, but you always pick a few uh, which will have a little, a little injury on them. Uh, a little bit of, yeah, it's a little bit of muck mm. like that, but it's not a big deal. All you need to do is just put them in. I mean, something like this is fine. Yeah. Uh, just Wash. like a, a little bath. Yeah. A little bath of water and just chug them up, mm -hmm. jiggle them up and down. The only way to sterilise them would be the soap them in a sterilising solution. I guarantee no, no. sane sandpaper no. on the planet yeah. would think of doing no. it. You probably would like to take some sort of record. Yeah, it's because it is a, is a chemistry, a science to it, so it'd be good to have the exact amounts of each ingredient and well, or at least element. Or least approximate. Yeah. To transpose those into a bag or a box or... Yeah. So that's Harry Masters jersey. I meant to bring some, uh, some paper with me to give you an idea. Uh, now that's Harry Masters jersey and that's Dabinat. Um, and those are both bitter sweets. Got a bit of acid in my very Stephen, I've uh, brought a, a drone with me. Oh, yeah. So I was wondering if I could do a quick drone shot of your. Yeah, of your... Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, that's a big boss. Yeah. <laughs>